Yo, what's good? Not every fighter has to be a Hall of Famer. Not every fighter has to be stacking millions or be in line to be in the Hall of Fame. It does not make this fighter a bum. And it does not mean this fighter should not be remembered. Today, I will be talking about Sumbu Kalambe. Uh, Sumbu Kalambe was a top middleweight in the mid 80s to early 90s. Uh, he has a very interesting story. He was born in the Congo in Africa, but he was raised in in Italy. Kalambe spent most of his early career in Italy. In fact, he didn't really leave Italy until he went on to face for the European middleweight title. But a few fights before that happened were uh, Buster Drayton, where he beat him in an eight-round unanimous decision. Drayton uh, defeated Dwayne Thomas. Dwayne Thomas, who defeated John the Beast Mugabe, who I did in Underappreciated Fighters last week. He, Drayton would, would be a future world champion in the IBF as a junior middleweight. He would defeat Davey Moore by knockout, and he would fight... Julian Jackson for the WBA junior middleweight title and Terry Norris. He would actually go the distance with Terry Norris. So, oh, speaking of Dwayne Thomas, uh, Colin Bay fought Dwayne Thomas and actually lost to him in his 37th fight. And as I mentioned, uh, Thomas had beaten John the Beast Mugabe. Colin Bay also lost to uh, Ayub Kal Kalule, who would be a future WBA champion and he would make five defenses of his WBA champion and Kalule would fight uh, McCallum, David Moore, Sugar Ray Leonard and Harold Graham. Kalule actually lost his title to Sugar Ray Leonard and this is this is who Sugar Ray Leonard won his 154 title from. Kalambe would go on to win the Italian middleweight championship against Giovanni DeMarco and then go on to face Harold Graham for the European title and the funny thing is Harold Graham was in line to win I mean to fight for a vacant middleweight title but they put him in against Callum Bay who beat Harold Graham in a close decision uh, both of these guys are master boxers very good boxers but Callum Bay edged it off by knocking him down with the left hook in the very last round. And, and Callum Bay won a decision, a unanimous decision, from Harold Graham, who was 38-0, ready to challenge for a world title in London, England. He fought him and beat him and won a unanimous decision. Only his second fight of his career outside of Italy, and he won it in spectacular fashion. He ended in spectacular fashion. His next fight was against Aaron Barkley for the vacant WBA middleweight title. And we all know what Aaron Barkley would accomplish after this. He would go on to knock out Tommy Hearns and defeat him, defeat him twice. But this was Callum Bay's time and Callum Bay fought a beautiful fight, man. And he This was a 15-round title fight. And for the 15 rounds... Callum Bay dominated. Callum Bay dominated Barkley. He fought a beautiful fight, jabbing and moving and throwing combinations. And in the 12th round, I thought Barkley was going down. But Barkley is a tough cookie. Barkley is a tough guy. He couldn't drop him, but he definitely dominated this fight. I only gave Barkley three rounds. Beat Mike McCallum in his finest performance of his career, man. He beat him in a unanimous decision. And he had Mike McCallum looking... Looking lost in there, really. He outboxed a very good boxer. Uh, a boxer coming up from the the junior middleweight division, coming up to the middleweight division. Uh, Mike McCallum had made it six defenses of his WBA title. He had knocked out Donald Curry, Milton McCroy, and Julian Jackson before moving up. But he didn't. He had not faced uh, Callum Bay. And Callum Bay fought such a good fight, man. I, I can't, I can't really, I can't really praise his performance in this fight enough. You just gotta, you just gotta understand how good Mike McCallum was to understand how good this performance was. On its own, it just looks like a really good performance, and it really was. But you gotta understand how good Mike McCallum was. Uh, after losing to Callum Bay, he would go on to win the middleweight 
middleweight title from Harold Graham. And then he would go on to become light heavyweight champion and face the likes of James Tony and Roy Jones. So he dominated a really good fighter and future Hall of Famer, I hope. He then beat, Callum Bay then beat uh, Robbie Sims, who beat Doug DeWitt, Roberto Duran, and Iran Barkley. Robbie Sims was Marvin Hagler's brother, and he was famous for that and famous for beating Roberto Duran in a very close decision, where I thought Roberto Duran won, but as you guys know, I'm a little biased when it comes to Duran. And his third and last defense of, of the WBA title, Callum Bay defeated Doug DeWitt in the seventh round TKO. Callum Bay hit him with a nasty right hand, and he did not want to get up. DeWitt was lost <laughs> after that after that knockdown, man. It, it was a pretty brutal knockdown. DeWitt would later win a WBO middleweight title from Robbie Sims. In DeWitt's very next fight, he won the world title, so he beat a future world champion in that fight. His very next fight, and it, his very next fight wasn't for the WBA championship. It was for the IBF title. It was for Michael Nunn's IBF title. Uh, Sumbu Kalambe had been stripped from the WBA title because he chose to fight Michael Nunn instead of wanting to fight Harold Graham again. So he got stripped for it and he faced Michael Nunn only for the IBF title. And this was Michael Nunn's most impressive victory. And Sumbu Kalambe's only knockout loss. He got knocked out not the fuck out in the first round, man. Man, <laughs> Michael Nunn set him up. Michael Nunn set him up. The only, the only really excuse I could say is for this fight is Michael Nunn's size and reach advantages in this fight, and that he just set him up beautifully. He threw that jab and then came up with that, with that left hook, and Michael Nunn being a southpaw, that was an extra hard punch and. Mike, um, Callum Bay did not get up from that punch. and But that was his only knockout loss of his career. So Callum Bay would, would never become a champion again. But he did become a Europe, European middleweight champion again. And made a few defenses of that. Actually he won it, won it twice or three times more. I don't know how it works. Someone explained to me. If you... If you Go for a world champion, do you immediately lose the European champion? Or do you have to lose a fight for the Euro, Euro title to lose that title? Someone please explain to me. But he went on to face Mike, McC Mike McCallum in a rematch. And this was another phenomenal fight. And this was a great performance by both men. Mike, Mike McCallum adjusted this time to Harold Graham. Started cutting off the ring. Started landing more body shots. But in the second half of the fight, Callum Bay was actually able to box just like he did in the first fight. It was extremely, extremely close fight. Mike McCallum won uh, a split decision. I actually thought Callum Bay edged it off, and it was really, really close. This fight, actually, for me, it, it depends on who you have winning the first four rounds. A lot of people have Mike McCallum winning the first five rounds, but I gave rounds three and four to Callum Bay, and that's why... I had the fight for Callum Bay, but this was a spectacular fight. Uh, Callum Bay did not look like a chump. Like McCallum made a lot of people look like chumps, but he could never make Callum Bay look like a chump because that style was so awkward. He went on to to win the, the European title again or defend it because he never lost it. I don't know. Someone explained to me that. <laughs> so he went on to do that. And he defeated Harold Graham again by unanimous decision. And he went on to uh, fight Steve Collins in Italy. And he defeated him in a disputed decision. I thought he deserved to win the decision. Um, Steve Collins came in and threw wild shots. Yes, he would push him back. And yes, he would have him on the ropes a lot. But he wasn't landing cleanly. Callum Bay was a very good boxer. He would move his head. He would roll the punches. He would move his feet. Steve Collins did not do it enough to win this fight. Anyway, Steve Collins would go on to face Mike McCallum and lose a, a unanimous decision. He lost a majority decision to Reggie Johnson. And later he became a super middleweight champion. So Callum Bay beat a larger man in Steve Collins. 
and Steve Collins would beat Chrissy Bank twice and Nigel Ben, which are legends. He would actually stop Nigel Ben at his last attempt at winning, at regaining that middleweight title, and his very last fight was against Chris Pyatt, who beat him in a unanimous decision in England. So one of the few times in his career that he left Italy, and the last time in his career, he lost a majority, a unanimous decision. Chris Pyatt, and Pyatt would go on to lose the title in his second defense against Steve Collins, and he also fought um, John David Jackson. So not a not a horrible loss, but I mean, after 13 years of pro and he was a, he was around like 38 years old at that time, so def, definitely not not anything to be ashamed of. You lost the decision against a decent fighter. So there you have it, folks. Sambu, Sumbu Kalambe, a very underappreciated fighter, a very superb, superb boxer. Very good footwork, very good jab, very very good head movement, and a very underappreciated fighter for a very underappreciated time for the. Junior middle, junior middleweight, middleweight, and super middleweight, which is the uh, mid to late 80s until the early 90s. So thanks everybody for watching. And what are some underappreciated fighters you could think of?